Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to have you here with us at London Film Festival. Maybe you can start off with a brief introduction to your film. What can audiences expect? Uh, well, Clock and Luda is a sort of conspiracy thriller, or dressed up as a conspiracy thriller, really, but it's actually like a character-based chamber piece, kind of dark comedy, um, about a whistleblower and his wife who are hold away in a, a in the Belgian countryside in a massive house that they've sort of haplessly rented um, while two close uh, uh, close protection security guards are sort of looking after them while they wait for a journalist to arrive to spill the beans. And of course you've had uh, a long and varied career in, in independent film and, yeah. and all sorts. Um, this is your first time stepping behind the camera so what um, prompted you to want to make that move and why the story? Well, I've always sort of directed and written stuff. A, bit, a lot of sort of theatre with training actors when I was very young and then I made a couple of shorts and stuff and, and always written with other people and, and, you know, pilot scripts for telly and stuff. And actually, Clock and Luda was something I worked on for ages, almost for me. It was such a weird film that I didn't necessarily think it would get financed. <laughs> so I was like, it was almost like the old car in the garage that you sort of think of, they go, oh, you never get that started. You know, I was like, really, I like these characters and this thing. It'd be lovely to make this in a house somewhere with some good actors and have them play around with it a bit as well. Um, so, and I've, you know, as I, I've wanted to direct a feature for ages. I mean, this took nearly eight years for someone to find the money for. And, um, you know, other stuff that I've got written and, and up with various people, it's, it's always the same issue, you know. British film particularly, film is really difficult to get funding for. Um, so, yeah, no, it's, I've, it's an itch I've sort of been desperate to scratch, really, to get a feature made. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's really lucky that yeah. all that came together. Does that answer your question? I yeah, like definitely. Been, yeah. And, um, you know, what do you think you do take from... Um, all the roles you've done as an actor, maybe with directors you work with, thinking Ben Wheatley, for yeah. example. Um, how does that kind of seep in, do you think, to, to being a director yourself? And were there any things that were like big surprises for you in going into the experience? Um, yeah, yeah, both of them. I mean, I, I, what I really grabbed from like Ben and Paul, Andrew Williams, who I worked with on Ball, I think we spoke before, was um, really my. The directors I've most enjoyed working with and I've found most rewarding, and actually that the end project has been broadly most successful, have been actors, uh, directors who kind of work with your ideas and lean into them a bit and see what you're doing and then nudge that rather than have preconceived notions about what, how the film will work out and then march you around like a puppet trying to reenact that vision, you know? Um, which I think is probably easier to do on massive budgets with loads of actors if you're, you know, Wes Anderson or someone. But certainly in independent film in this country, it works a lot better um, to, to work like that. And so I was, I wanted to work in that way. And I've always wanted, like Ben does, to work in improvisation, uh, roll whole takes of impro where you're working sort of around the, the script or the text and whatever. Um, and Paul's really loose with that, you know, he just wants to know, he doesn't even want to know what you've come up with, it's just like, do it. Um, so yeah, there was all that stuff. And then what I didn't really, the challenges I didn't really think about before was that, you know, moments of politics or whatever come up between groups or departments you're not even aware of and you've got to, you know, pour a bit of water on that or, or manage that, which I just did not anticipate at all. And, um, but in a sense, that all that all lends itself to the creative endeavour somehow. So yeah, that was the kind of challenge that maybe I didn't foresee, but mm. it was all all right in the end. I think. <laughs> and tell us about the shoot, and also particularly working with your cast, such interesting actors, particularly like Tom Burke. I don't know, and it seems to do really varied yeah. um, roles, really interesting actors. So, so how do you choose your cast, and how do you work with them? Well, I mean, I'm married to one of the cast, so that <laughs> that made that a fairly simple choice, and one that I would have probably lost a limb if I'd have made any different uh, <laughs> choice in that respect. Um, Roger Evans, I wrote the part of Glyn for. He's an amazing actor. Anyone over the years that 
we were kind of got close a couple of times and things fell through and whatever. Any time I said to any other actor, Tom Burke included, that I had Roger in that role, they would always actors know Rog, and um, and maybe producers and that world a little less. So I always wanted that, and then Tom. When I did ask Tom if he would have a look at it, because we're mates, he was, I think he was more excited about the prospect of working with Roger on a day to day basis than he was necessarily by the script. But, um, but he was quickly on board and stuff. Then Amit, I was just looking at, I was, I looked at loads of actors and looked at their work. I didn't want to audition people or have people read for parts. I think you come with a confidence when you know someone's seen your other work and just brought you in. That's something I got from other directors as well, actually. Um, so that was about bringing him on. And then Tom's agent is also Jenna's agent. And I really wanted someone who was doing something different for that part, who hadn't maybe played something like that before, but was just really solid. And uh, she suggested Jenna for it and straight away. You know, I was already familiar with work she'd done. And she still blew me away. I think what she's done in this film is really extraordinary. And a hell of a thing to come on for just the last third, late in the show, verbally machine gun everyone for two days. You know, relentless monologue after monologue which uh, wouldn't encourage me to see a film. <laughs> but she's so good at it, it's so fast. <laughs> uh, it, oh, it, it doesn't get weighed down, which it could well have done with another actor. So I was just so lucky, man, so lucky with those five. What does it mean for you to have a film here at London Film Festival? And, you know, what do you hope people take away? It's got kind of, like, darkly comic, got thriller aspects. What do you think people take away? Well, I'm a Londoner, so it's amazing to have a film at the London Film Festival. And... It's a shame that my days are so full of anxiety about people seeing the film because <laughs> I might be able to enjoy it otherwise. And uh, I was actually sat in the car this morning going to work, I'm filming as an actor on another project. And I was like, isn't this everything you want? Why do you feel so <laughs> full of dread? <laughs> um, but it's still exciting being here and like getting the chance to watch other work. I, I come to London Film Festival, I live in Antwerp, but if I'm in London, I'll go to see work. I saw Boy From Heaven last night, the Egyptian film. Tofik Barham's a really good friend of mine and very close. And um, So, you know, to get the chance to see work like that that you wouldn't necessarily see on a cinema release in this country or in or in Belgium is um, is great. And, and, you know, that's the best thing about film festivals, really. It's one, the only time you get access to loads of work that you wouldn't otherwise. So that's the kind of biggest bonus for me. And very quickly, are you going to um, keep the director's hat on for another project? Or are you I doing more so. acting? You know, or what's, so, what's up next? Uh, I mean, I've just done, I've got this project, Litvinenko, that I was about to start on ITV next month, about the murder of Alexander Litvinenko, and I've played a kind of murder... Uh, investigator on that um, so that's coming up and then I've been working on a long job seemingly endless job this year um, which I can't talk about where a big net drops down and people come out and bash me up um, I think if I, I didn't read the NDA but I think it was something like that um, so I'm still acting all the time but yeah I'd love to do another one someone if someone wants to pull up the readies then I'll, I'll do it you know amazing well thank you so much for sharing all that with us okay, and really enjoying presenting the film here at London Film Festival thanks a lot